Hello everybody and welcome! In this lesson we are going to rig this puppet figure in Synfig. The puppet consists of various cut out body parts which I created in Inkscape. If you want to follow along with the same puppet you can download it from the link in the description. Alternatively you can create your own puppet first. The most important thing in creating the puppet is that you have to create various body parts which can move reasonably seamlessly with respect to each other. In the previous video I used a construction circle to achieve this. Click here to see the video. This video is part of a series. If you want to see what I will be creating over the course of the series, then click here to look at the intended end result. I am using Synfig version 1.2.0 in this video. So let's get started, shall we? The first thing we should do is import the figure. Go to File, Import. We get some warnings about blur amplifiers, but I'm going to ignore that for now. Let's zoom out and have a look at the image. In the middle we have the stage. Down below we have the timeline. At the bottom right we have an overview of all the shapes in the drawing. First I click on the hair layer. I'm going to try to move the hair by clicking and dragging the green circle. When I try this I get an error message. The value you are trying to edit is in a composition, which does not seem to be open. This is slightly annoying. I will I didn't want to edit the existing composition, I wanted to import the composition into a new file. So in order to do that I'm going to copy and paste. I select the shapes and click on copy. Then I click on the link and I click on paste. This pastes the layers above the link. Next I want to remove the link. This is a good time to save our progress. Now I am going to group the various shapes by selecting the layers and clicking on the green folder. I will rename the group to Character 5. I will resize the group by using this orange handle. Incidentally, I could also resize the group vertically or horizontally only by using one of these yellow handles, but I won't do that right now. The next step is to add a skeleton. Right click on circles and choose new layer, others and then skeleton. A bone appears on the stage. Zooming in, we see that the bone has green, blue and brown handles, as well as a light blue area. The green handle controls the position. The brown handle controls the length and the angle of the bone, and the blue angle, with the blue angle we can rotate the bone, while ensuring that the length does not change. I'm going to work, I'm going, I don't want to work with the light blue area, so I'm going to make it go away. I click on toggle width handles and then I drag the pink hand handles to make the width of the bone zero. And then I'm going to make the handles invisible again by deactivating toggle width handles. This bone is the base bone. All the other bones in the skeletons will rotate relative to this one. I find that a useful place to place the bone is by the hip. So let's move it here and name the bone base. This bone is not attached to any shape, but it is attached to all the other bones. Now right click on any one of the bone handles and choose Create Child Bone. This will be the torso bone, so let's name it as such. And let's move the center of rotation to the top of the hip 
and let's rotate and resize the torso bone so that it covers the whole torso. Now remember that the torso bone is a child of the base bone, so if I move or rotate the base bone, the torso bone will follow, and if I move or rotate the torso bone, it has no effect on the base bone. Okay, next I'm going to create a neck bone as a child of the torso bone and a head bone as a child of the neck bone. After that, I'm going to create the arm bones. The upper arms are each children of the torso. So I'm going to right click on the torso bone and create another child bone. With the name LU arm. L stands for left and U stands for upper. In order to place the center of rotation of the arm, I will f make use of the construction circle. I place the center of rotation of the arm on the center of the construction circle. I use to work out the sh sh shoulder joint. The lower left arm is a child of the upper left arm. And I will also use the construction, uh, the construction circle of the elbow to place the center of rotation of this bone. And I will also do the same for the right arm. Next, I will make the hip bone. The hip bone is a child of the base. The Upper legs are at both uh, children of the hip. So let's make the upper left leg, the lower left leg, and the left foot. As well as the upper right leg. the lower right leg and the right foot. And let's name all the bones. If all has gone well, you can rotate the bones and the children bones will rotate along. If we move the base bone, then the whole section, the whole skeleton moves. Next we have to glue the flesh up to the bones. So, so we're going to do it first with the torso. Select the torso layer, click on select or all child layers, click and drag the rectangle to select the vertices we want to glue to the bone. Then hold down control and click on the skeleton. Right click on any one of the torso handles and choose link to bone. 
Next, we select the neck layer. Click on Select All Child Layers. Here we press Ctrl A to select all the vertices. Ctrl click on the skeleton, right click on any one of the handles of the bone and choose Link to Bone. We repeat this process for all the bones and all the vertices. Make sure that each vertice is a link to at least one bone. Now let's position the bones as we wish and you can see that the position of the puppet fo will follow. As a final step we want to make the construction circles invisible. So we uncheck the circles layer. Thanks for watching. In the next lesson, we will cover how to use this rigged puppet to create a walk cycle. If you enjoyed this video and or found it useful, then you might enjoy this one too. And since you are here anyway, why not click on the like button? Ciao, see you in the next lesson. Bye bye.